the deliminator won't crank. So I have a special key to crank it. Hold her there. Take it out of gear? No. Ah! Friday morning. And you know, kind of look around a little bit. Putting some diesel in the track machine again. It's time for some diesel. It's the first time it's had diesel since the last video y'all have seen. That thing holds 230 gallons, if I remember right. And I use my hour meter deal in the monitor till I have I cut with it till about 220 gallons or so so running a little short on fuel they had a fuel pump mess up the other evening and it uh, kind of threw us off my fueling schedule so I'm only having to put about 100 gallons in it today and save the rest of it for the, the other machines for this afternoon. But anyways, that's what's going on right now. We're putting some diesel in, in the loader, I mean in the cutter, getting ready to kill some trees. And we should be cleaning this block up today, finally. Finally, is it? Uh, I think we. I think I said two videos ago we should have been cleaning up that day. The wood picked up, and it got better, and it got more dense on the ground. So it just, it took a little while to run through these last couple of patches. I still have. I figure there's there's still probably another seven loads or so to cut. So most of the day today, we're not working tomorrow. Tomorrow Saturday, we're not working tomorrow. Pretty super superstitious. We don't move on Fridays if we can avoid it. So even if I cut out a little bit early today, I can still get my ten loads. I'm not moving. It's uh, I hate starting a new track on Friday. Anyway, my diesel should be about done. I'll be back later. So jump down right at the end of the day. Same thing as yesterday. I got a little bit first thing this morning. Uh, videoed. Uh, Should have been able to get the excitement of me trying to jump the studs over on that starter. Uh, what the clip you, sh you know, they're they're the clip from this morning. That's what you should have seen there. Uh, starter. I, I say the starter. Either the little motor thing he's going bad on the starter or the um, the solenoid is going bad. But 
you got to get in this that's the second morning in a row i've had to get in there and jump those studs like that but since the end of the day now figured i'd jump down and do a little video and what little bit i can get it's uh show y'all what we do with our roadsides here and goes all the way see so that road goes to the right right there and we crossed it in two different spots because you can see how narrow of a strip that is i think it was like seven down rows wide something like that six down rows wide it wasn't very wide and you can see let's see if i can stick my finger up here and show y'all see it stops right about in there kind of about where that shadow the dark spot is in the road is where it stops anyway you see how i pulled all the bushes back and we cut about a down row width off the edge of the road otherwise it would look like this and you see how this is all grew up on the roadside everything else and then over here on this side of the road everything is nice and clean looking you got a clean view of the timber that's growing so if the timber company was to want to bring investors or a you know some kind of woods tour by to look at the work that we do they they have a clean shot of the timber you know you, i mean you can see right here it's just you just drive by and you look at the timber that's left standing instead of having a wall of crap that looks like this and they're like well we got to get out and walk and look and then anybody who knows business people they don't like getting out in the hot and looking so <laughs> anyway so this is one of the, this is not a requirement this is one of the extra steps that i take as a uh, prideful operator contractor whatever you want to call it uh, i do this little bit of extra myself nobody makes me i do this all on my own it uh it just cleans your road sides up and like right now another big thing this really helps with and it takes me forever to get a new forester when i start having to work with a new forester it takes me forever to get them to understand this so look down here you can see where i haven't thinned or daylighted the road yet behind my cutter you see how it's got the dark spot right in there how far it's still sticking out in the road it's three o'clock the sun is pretty high up in the sky and you see how much more daylight all this back here has so you you basically sometimes depending on how much you pull back you can double triple even quadruple the amount of time sometimes that your road gets daylight because when it's like growed up like it is down there right now you're only getting daylight on your road when it's absolutely in the upper part of the sky and then most especially in the winter time when the sun is at lower angles you get even less sunlight on the road so when you open this up and if i was going to cut this side over here it would be opened up too so the sun coming in because this way is east this way this way is west so when the sun's coming up you know you'd get an hour or two sometimes three uh more hours of daylight on your road and in the winter time when it's wet that could be the difference of your road kind of staying under you while it's wet and in between rain showers uh, days of rain or however it's working that's the difference of you know having to spend a bunch of money on rock or whatever daylighting your road is the cheapest road maintenance you can do for your your property i mean, i can't express that enough with anybody who owns timberland if you don't have a good access to your stuff it don't matter how good your timber is you're not going to get in there to it and you're not going to get it out no matter how good it is you're going to have a very narrow win window in the middle of summer because everything around here stays so wet you know, we we have a really good 
window from usually June to uh, depending on how the hurricanes sometimes may come in tropical storms you may get uh, you know August end of August September you may sometimes get a storm in that might kind of knock you back out of some wet spots but you you really only have a you know a three to four month window to get into the the wetter places that you have timber growing and that sounds like a long time but when you know you have thousands of acres of trees and to get harvested and you only have that short amount of time it uh that's how a lot of your timber gets off schedule and instead of being you know thinned at 13 14 years old like a lot of the landowners want to try and have their stuff done you start getting stuff that's 16 years old or older, older because it's uh you know it's, it's just behind and then you start losing timber because it starts self thinning itself but waiting on the skitter to come back down here he comes back in a second I will uh I'll try and get some video watch y'all let y'all watch him build his next drag we'll be back in a minute So y'all check this out. Oh, we got the duels off. It's such a cute little thing. I think we're finally to the breaking point for summertime weather. We got some really good tracks coming up ahead of us. So we went ahead and pulled the duels off of this today. No, I didn't get no video of it. We, I was still cutting. This guy has never thinned before. Today is his very first time to ever thin on a rubber tire. So, I gotta clear some memory. I'll be right back. Okay, so I got some memory cleared out for us now. Anyway, this is this guy's very first day to ever thin. He's, he's never thin with a trap machine, rubber tire, nothing. He, so we're kind of teaching him. I'm teaching him, however you want to say it. Just come over here and we'll check on him. See how he's doing. His thinning actually looks pretty decent. I can see I'm going to have to work with him a little bit, though, on how he coming in and out of the roads like right there is how you want to you know you want to come in and out at like a 45 if I'm shaking the camera too much y'all we're just going to, have to deal with it today fellas because the mosquitoes out here are horrible and see how he's trying to back up in a hole that he cut on the other side and go straight in off this side And that's taken quite a while. He, you know, if that was just every once in a while type thing, it wouldn't be that big of an issue. But he's going in 
and doing that every time he tries to go in and thin. He has a 620 up there. And it, just, it kills your time. What, the most productive way I've ever found to run one of these and somebody that knows more about running rubber tires is I don't claim to be a professional on rubber tire. I am not a badass at a rubber tire. I'll be straight up honest with you. But the uh, you definitely want to make sure you're you're working. At, I found the fastest way to do it is work at, at 45. It's kind of like what he's going in right there. I've always cut the most wood with a rubber tire thin and going at 45s like that. The uh, You know, every once in a while you're going to have to do a 90 degree twist up in there, but somebody that knows, you know, you run one every day, you thin with it, comment below, let me know. I'm, I'm always down for new techniques and stuff, most especially when it's something that I'm not, uh, you know, I, I don't do a whole, I've done a bunch of rubber tire thinning, but I, I, I'll tell anybody, I'm, I'm not the best. I can run the crap out of it down rowing. But I can thin way faster with a track machine. Which anybody can thin faster with a track machine if they know what they're doing. With the track machine. But anyway, so I figured I'd let y'all watch him a little bit. Yeah, he's slow. I don't need somebody getting on that thing and just trying to kill it. It's not our main production machine. I'll let him... Give him a couple days, let him learn. We'll never replenish our workforce if I don't take the time, me, whoever. If the current loggers that we have right now don't take the time to replenish the workforce that is rapidly depleting, we're gonna be in a bad bind here in a few more years. He's looking at his tops. I know some people will say, why are you thinning and going in? This is honestly the fastest way I've ever seen a rubber tire cut is cutting both sides going in like that, thinning. Some people prefer to go from the back so they don't have to crawl over the wood. But if you kind of throw it off to the side like what I showed him to do there, it's no big deal. So, anyway. I'm going to flip this thing over and get some slow motion shots fixing to wrap the day up if y'all like the videos appreciate the views everybody watching the likes the comments um, if you're not subscribed please subscribe to the channel make sure you click the bell where you get notified whenever I post a video see how he turned completely around there that's what I was talking about a second ago Sometimes you have to do that, but that slows you down so bad when you do that. But anyway, make sure y'all hit the like button on the video. Make sure if 
Leave a comment if you're new. Let me know. If you just want to talk, leave a comment. We'll talk. I like talking. Anyway, as I was saying before, my camera cut me off for it being too hot. Turn y'all's exposure down so y'all can see what's going on a little bit better. Appreciate all the views. Appreciate all the new subscribers. If you not subscribe, if you would, go down there and just click subscribe. Um, make sure you click the bell so you get notified when I post something new every day. Or I try to post throughout the week. Anyway, we're calling it a day. I'm going to go get some more slow motion shots of this thing. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. We'll see y'all next time.